Hey, Clemson family, Wednesday is early signing day, and to give us some extra insights on a talented young man about to become Tigers, we have got a great guest joining us today. I'm Daniel Shirley. That guest is Jeremy Johnson from ClemsonSports.com and the On3 Network. Jeremy's going to break down the Clemson class for us, and then we'll also have some other news about the Clemson program on this episode. Busy time of year. I'm Bill Zimmerman. Welcome to episode 51 of the Reign Supreme Allway podcast. Thanks to the thousands of you who make us one of your sources for analysis of the Tigers in 2022 and into 2023, both on the major podcast apps and at youtube.com slash Clemson kickoff. Well, let's get to it. We are glad to have Jeremy Johnson with us, bringing his boots on the ground insights to get everyone ready for early signing day. Jeremy, thanks for taking time. You know, I've worked in the recruiting world a little. I know you are super busy right now over at ClemsonSports.com. <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate y'all having me on. And then, yes, it is definitely go time. It is definitely, you know, the business time of the year. Jeremy, who's kind of the headline guy for this class? And feel free to interpret that however you like. I got you. You know, I think the highest ranked guy, we can go that direction. The highest ranked guy would probably be Peter Woods. Uh, five, he's considered a five-star by the on-three consensus. Uh, defensive tackle, defensive end. He plays the three, the five. He could play the seven a little bit. He's a jack of all trades on that defensive line. He's one of those guys that will fit that Clemson culture. He will be an impact player, you know, early on in his career just because of his character. He plays really hard. He's physical. He's one of those guys that he just moves and plays a little differently than everyone else on the field. I'm going to give you another one, too, just because it's, you know, the quarterback position. That's the big, shiny position everybody loves. Christopher Vizina, uh, I believe the last time we talked, you know, I was really high on him. And I really think Clemson hit a home run landing him. He's considered a, you know, consensus four-star coming from Birmingham, Briarwood Academy. He's one of those quarterbacks that can do everything. He's big enough to run, big and athletic enough to run around a little bit and create things when there's chaos around his feet. With him on the field, you know, every level of a defense has to be stressed because he can he can run it. And defensive ends and defensive tackles and linebackers have to worry about if we get there and get our hands on him, can we bring him down because he's so big? And then you have to, as a secondary, you have to make sure you plaster because he's one of those guys that can go from the side arm and just cork the ball 50, 60 yards down the field and hit, and hit a target. So. He's a special talent. I think he will be somebody that we, you know, we talk about for the next couple of years being a real asset to what Clemson is trying to do in their offense. Jeremy, when you look at this class, is there somebody who's underrated, you think, and maybe people are overlooking? Yeah, I think Clemson found a couple of those guys in this class. The first one that just jumps out when I hear underrated, I think, is Khalil Barnes, probably from Bogart, uh, North Oconee. He's considered a three-star prospect, but this guy kind of exploded over the summer. Physically, he's exploded the last two years. I, I've seen him a lot, and it's because I, I grew up in Athens, so he's a big kid. He plays corner right now. I think he's going to end up as a slot, nickel, safety type player at Clemson. He can play receiver, too, if he needs to. Um, I think he's one of those guys that will get in the program. He'll add, a, he'll add a little more weight. He'll get some experience playing in the defensive backfield, and in two or three years down low, he could be a big part of what they're doing in that secondary. Is there a position in this class that Clemson hasn't hit on yet? You know, the wide receiver position is one that I think, you know, fans have kind of been clamoring for and people have been kind of looking at, you know, that they would hit harder. They obviously landed Noble Johnson, four-star receiver, you know, who's a good football player. He's physical. Big. He's, he's good in catching in tight spaces. Roman Honifin will play receiver. There's some potential that Mason Kelly will be an offensive player. I'm not sure where he will play. He's listed as a corner, but I think he'll play some offense. But I think that wide receiver position could have been addressed, you know, a little deeper. They need some speed. Obviously, Dakari Collins transferred, and they haven't really replaced Amari Rogers for a few years ago. And that slot position with the big play guy, they can do a little bit of everything. So I feel like that's one spot that they could have addressed. Christopher Johnson was a guy that they were in on. He committed to Miami. He's a slot uh, running back type player with a lot of speed. So I think that was a, a position that could have been filled, and it definitely will be a priority moving into the 2024 class. What about the offensive linemen that they got in this class? I, I like all three of those guys. Could they add a fourth? You know, maybe maybe going into that the next signing period, maybe there's a fourth guy. I do like all three of these guys they got. You know, Zechariah Owens, you know, he, he had an injury this year and didn't play a lot, so – 
Ian uh, Reed and Hare Sewell, you know, those guys are big time players that play, both of them play guard. Zachariah is a tackle, probably a right tackle in college. I feel like there's room to add another guy, an athletic left tackle type guy, or even a center moving forward. So that'll be something to watch, you know, after this early signing period to see who they kind of, you know, once things kind of settle and they, you know, reshuffle the board a little bit on the offensive line, we'll see, we'll see what happens there. I don't, I don't think they really offered anybody else right now, but that that would be something to look for, you know, moving moving forward. Maybe even the transfer portal if you know Clemson decides to take that route. Are any of those three guys like play right away, or are they all maybe slowly bring them into the fold a little bit? You know, I think Ian Reed could play early if he needed to. Honestly, I feel like Harris Sewell could play early as well. As well, both of those guys are physically mature guys. Uh, Harris is about six four, three hundred and five pounds right now. Ian Reed, 6'6", 290, you know, could add a couple pounds. But, you know, I feel like both of those guys could help early inside if they needed to. Um, Zechariah is coming off an injury, you know, I feel like he could have, had he had finished the season out healthy and, you know, played this entire season, I feel like he could have stepped in. He's physically a giant. He's 6'5", 385 pounds right now. So he's a mauler type player that could help, you know, at any level. So. I don't know that they can help right now. I feel like both all those guys, you know, may need some time to grow a little bit, but I could see them playing early if they needed to. And they, I don't think they would be out of place if they were to get out there early. You mentioned Barnes. What do you think of the other secondary commits? Because this feels like a class that's going to be important in that secondary for this program. Yeah, it is. And I think all, I guess there's four or five guys that are committed. You know, I feel like all of them will have a role at some point. You know, it may not be this year. It may not be next year. But I feel like I look at them almost in tears because you got Avion Terrell, who I think personally is going to be hard to keep off the field his first couple of years. And I know obviously they got Jaden Lucas uh, last year, a couple of the guys in there, Col Colville that, you know, played a lot as freshmen, but you know, Avion Terrell's a, he's been technically sound for a while, and he's been one of those players that once he gets the football in his hands, he's dangerous and he makes a lot of plays. So I think he will be hard to keep off the field for a long time. He's also one of those guys I consider like a culture setter. I've seen Westlake play a lot um, in my time here, um, and I think he's one of those that's fair business like. So getting him in your locker room and eventually as his role grows, I think he will be one of those voices of that defense, you know, in the long term. But I think he'll have an impact early on in his college career. Brandon Strogier is probably, he came on the scene really late. He's, he played at a really small school. He's the one that I think you look at and say, wow, this guy has a ton of upside. You know, looking three years down the road, he may be the one that has the most pro prospects because of his length. He's 6'2", uh, about 180 right now. But, you know, he has a frame that could get even bigger over these next couple of years. And then you get, you know, Kylan Webb, Robert Billings, and Khalil Barnes, and Shelton Lewis, and Mishon Kelly. Could, you know, he's played some defensive back. So, you know, he, there's potential for him to still fill in there. So, you know, I feel like those guys can all, they're at the very least, they'll have roles on special teams. There'll be depth. You know, they, they won't, you know, necessarily come in and be starter type guys, but there's roles for all of those guys, especially uh, early in their careers. You mentioned Peter Woods. Sounds like he's going to play right away. Anybody else who you say, okay, yeah, that guy, he's going to be ready to go as soon as he gets on campus? Yeah, I feel like this class will have a lot of those guys. Peter Woods, Tamarian Parker, Stephylin Green. I think Jamal Anderson has a chance to get on the field early. A uh, four-star linebacker from Mill Creek, David Ojigby, A.J. Hoffler. All those guys will see time potentially here in the next couple months. So I feel like it's a class. This is an important class for Clemson. And it was important that they got some guys, especially on that defensive side, where you're potentially losing you know, guys that have been entrenched there for a while. So I've had to give a top three, I would say, to Marion Parker, Stephon Green, and Vic Burley are all guys that play a lot, other than Peter Woods early on. Any surprises coming Wednesday, or are we going to have a drama-free day on Wednesday? <laughs> um, you know, I feel like Clemson's kind of in a good spot just as far as, like, the drama goes. They got 25 commits right now. I feel like all those guys, you know, they'll be signed, sealed, and they'll start looking towards getting on campus whenever they decide to. There's a few battles still brewing with them on the running back side. I do think they want another running back. Obviously, they've offered Jamarian Wilcox, who hasn't made public when he'll decide. Jamarius Haynes, another guy that's he he's a late, you know, one of those guys that picked up a lot of steam in the recruiting side. Late Clemson was the first to offer. He's been he's taken an official to Clemson. I feel like he's one to watch. 
he was originally supposed to commit on Wednesday and has since pushed his decision back to well, around the first of the year. He said February, but it may not go that long. So he's one that you're going to have to watch. That may be the only drama that's really happening with Clemson is just what happens with that second running back spot for them. Jeremy, you talked about the early enrollees. Obviously, quarterback is the first answer, but what's the second position you think it's most important for a player to enroll early and be there for spring and, and all the workouts? You know, I think it's defensive line. I think because it, a couple of reasons, just because Clemson's in a position, you know, where they'll lose a lot of guys and that position will be guys that have to contribute early. They do rotate a lot on the defensive line to keep guys fresh. So those guys need to get in you know, get familiar with the schemes, pick up on the stunts and all that stuff, the calls. And physically, you know, you go from working out with a high school team where you're the most dominant dominant, and most physically imposing person, probably on campus in a lot of situations. And then you get in a room with a lot of guys that are, they're the same size as you, but they're more physically mature. That can be a shock to your system. So in that position group in particular, I feel like the guys that are coming in will need to get up to speed in order to be able to, you know, contribute in the fall. So I feel like this spring and this winter will be big for that group to get in there and put on some of that man weight when you get to college. Jeremy, a lot of this class is coming from the state of Georgia where you're based. Is there anyone you've seen in person and you're like, yeah, this guy maybe deserves a little bit more of a bump than he's getting in the rankings composite wise? Oh, yeah. The name that immediately comes up is the Five and Green. You know, we've talked about Peter Woods. We've talked about Vic Burley a little bit, but I watched the Five and play twice now. And, you know, he, he took over one, the first game of the year against Creekside. Creekside has a really good offensive lineman. Caleb Holmes, probably one of the top 200 type players in the country for the 2024 class. And the Five and Green, you know, he did some good things that night. That tape will be one of the more impressive tapes you watch. He's a lot like Peter Woods. He he plays a similar style. They they don't he does not stop playing football. Like his motor just doesn't stop. I mean, when those lights come on, he's he's a different type of person when the <laughs> when the lights come on. He's I feel like that'll be he'll be an early impact guy as well. And I think Clemson fans are gonna love his effort. I mean, I've seen him on one side of the formation, you know, get blocked over there and then the ball go the other way and then he comes sprinting at almost 300 pounds across the field to make the tackle. So he's going to be one that endears himself to any program, you know, just watching him play. So we have him ranked higher than pretty much anybody in the industry. He's number 46 overall for us, and 93 is his consensus. So, you know, I feel like he he's one that's, you know, I think people have kind of slept on a little bit, even though he's top 100 player in the country. I feel like he could even be higher than that. So he will be, he'll be one to watch. A lot of guys coming to Clemson this year from the Georgia area. So just another reason we really wanted to have you join us today. Really appreciate it, Jeremy. People can check out your stuff at ClemsonSports.com and On3.com. Thanks again, and good luck with the, all the craziness on Wednesday. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys for having me. Be sure to follow us on social media, at Clemson Kickoff on Twitter and on Instagram. Having some fun with both of those and definitely keeping people up with news in between our episodes. Well, some news today as we record this on Monday. Some transfers out of Clemson have chosen their destinations. Led by linebacker Vontae Bentley, who has decided he is primed to go to Colorado and join its new head coach, Deion Sanders. This one really disappoints me because I'm a big fan of Bentley's. I thought he was going to be a big time piece for the Clemson defense. He had his time, had some places when he shined and did some good things. I just wish he would have gotten more of a chance, I guess, to be a bigger part or maybe took advantage of that a little bit more when he had those chances. But I'm a big fan of, of Bentley. So hopefully he goes to Colorado and does well and does some good things for the Buffaloes. Yep, I always enjoy watching him play. Now I'm going to finally have a good reason to stay up and watch some Pac-12 after dark, right? And root for him and hope that he makes it into the league and does well there. Another transfer choosing a destination today is cornerback Fred Davis. He was a huge recruit when he signed, uh, has struggled both on and off the field at Clemson. He's going to go closer to his Jacksonville home and head to Orlando and play for UCF. This one's not as big a surprise, right? I mean, Fred just really did not take advantage of his time in Clemson. We all know about the accident, everything that happened there, but it just felt like he never could get on the field enough to to take advantage of his opportunities. And 
it's disappointing. Uh, like you said, he was a big time get. He was a, a big time recruit, but it just did not work out for him at Clemson. Hopefully, he goes to UCF and gets a fresh start, and everything works out well for him. Hate that it didn't work out at Clemson, but it, looking forward to see what he does at Central Florida and and see how things work out for him. Knights joining the Big 12 pretty soon under head coach Gus Malzahn, so he will have a chance uh, to get things straightened out and earn the spotlight that a lot of us expected from him long ago. Be sure to check out our website, clemsonkickoff.com. All our episodes are posted there. You can scroll back, find out where we've been right and wrong uh, in recent months. One more quick note to get into, and maybe we'll spend a minute or two on this, but the South Carolina Football Hall of Fame has its 25 finalists for the class of 2022. Of course, there are several former Clemson players on that list, led by running backs coach C.J. Spiller, another running back Terry Allen on that list, quarterback Woody Dantzler, a pair of defensive linemen in Jeff Bryant and Jim Stuckey, and O-lineman Joe Bostic. What a group. You're looking at maybe the two best running backs Clemson's ever had. I know Terry Allen doesn't get mentioned a lot in that conversation, but I think he's right up there. And then C.J. Spiller definitely is in that conversation with Travis Etienne and whoever else you want to include. That's a great group. I, I, look, I grew up on Jim Stuckey and Jeff Bryant and those names. I mean, those were great players. Joe Bostic was a great player with his brother Jeff. So these are great players in Clemson history, and hopefully at least one or two or three of them will be in this class when the voting is completed. Some of y'all might need to talk about the old heads or do a little research, but I think it's pretty easy to just go vote for all six if you ask me. The website is scfootballhof.org. We've got that link on our Twitter feed. I've already sent that out today. We'll try to retweet it a few times here and there, make it a little easier. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, youtube.com slash Clemson kickoff. Follow us on the major podcast apps. We will keep you posted. We are going to do our level-headed best to come at you Wednesday afternoon or evening and sum up the call of talent from signing day. A lot of young men about to enter the next chapter of their lives. Several of them will be coming to campus very soon. Until our next episode, I'm Bill Zimmerman. I'm Daniel Shirley. Go Tigers.